I started believing in Lord Jesus in 1995. After that, a heart illness I'd had for years got better miraculously. I was so thankful and often gave offerings to the church. Three years passed, and I got an even greater blessing from God. When I accepted the work of Almighty God in the last days and welcomed the Lord's return. Through reading God's words, I learned how God expresses the truth, doing the work of judgment in the last days to cleanse mankind, bringing man to a wonderful destination. That's, That's right. right. I thought that I should be expending, making sacrifices, and doing good works if I ever want to reach a good destination. So then I started to spread the gospel, and I'd host from time to time, doing my best as often as I truly could. Any extra money I had, I'd donate to brothers and sisters who needed it. One time, while I was spreading the gospel, police arrested me. I was tortured by them, and then sentenced to jail. But even so, I didn't betray God. I thought that since I had done so many good works, surely I'd be blessed by God. But then, in 2018, my heart disease from 20 years ago just came back, and I was hospitalized two times from it. I thought to myself, no matter what happens to me, I really shouldn't complain. Just submit to God's arrangements. In two weeks, I'd recovered and was released from the hospital. I was deeply grateful to God. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that since I didn't complain, even though I was sick, and I continued to fulfill my duty, that I was truly loyal, that I was obedient to God. But then, in February of 2019, my heart disease came back out of nowhere. Was it very serious? Much more serious than the last time. After that, I was also diagnosed with diabetes, and I had a bad herniated disc as well. I couldn't take care of myself. To eat, I had to lie down. My daughter-in-law had to carry me to the bathroom. I lay in bed all day and didn't have the strength to speak or even blink. One night around then, I suddenly got a lot worse. My chest hurt. I was scared to breathe. I felt that if I did, my life might just end. The pain lasted for about a half hour, and I thought I might die at any second. To get that sick so suddenly, that must have been really difficult. Yeah. Hmm. The pain was just horrible. So I thought, now I'm so sick I don't even have the strength to blink. Could this be the end? How will I enter the kingdom? I won't share in the blessings of the kingdom or see its scenery if I don't live. Is it over for me? The more I thought, the worse I felt. I prayed on it a lot, but I couldn't grasp God's intention. As time went by, the agony of this illness didn't let up. It made me lose the will to live. But I knew that God did not yet intend for me to die. I didn't know what could be done. Unconsciously, I was making demands of God. When am I going to get better? All the sisters the same age as me are much healthier than me, but I haven't expended or contributed any less than they have. I had given so much for God, even given money to those brothers and sisters who needed it. I actively performed every duty that I could. Also, when I was arrested and suffered so much, I never denied or betrayed God. I know, I did plenty of good deeds, right? Why doesn't God bless and protect me or make me strong? I was constantly complaining back then. My heart was in a dark place. So then how did you turn yourself around? Later, only after my heart began to hurt worse, did I start to pray and seek and come before God. I prayed to God, saying, Oh God, my heart problems have suddenly worsened. I can't understand your intention. I don't know how to experience this. Dear God, I don't want to rebel against you. Please guide me so I can learn from this experience. And soon, 
I remembered this from God's words. How should the onset of sickness be experienced? You should come before God to pray and seek to grasp His will and examine just what it is that you did wrong or what corrupt dispositions there are within you that you cannot resolve. You can't resolve them without pain. People must be tempered by suffering. Only then will they stop indulging and always live before God. When faced with suffering, people will always pray. They will give no more thought to good food, nice clothing, or fun. In their hearts, they will make prayers and examine whether they have done anything wrong during this time. Most of the time when people face serious or unknown sickness that causes them great pain, these things do not happen by accident. Whether you are sick or healthy, God's will is behind it all. Amen. 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 I thought on God's words, and I understood His intention better. God wasn't using this illness to take my life from me or making me suffer without any reason. He used it to expose my corrupt disposition to teach me lessons. It was God's way of saving me. Thank God. I shouldn't misunderstand or blame God. I had to reflect on myself. Right. Which parts of God's words helped you through this? Several passages of God's word helped me understand my state at that time. Let me read them now. Okay. All right. So many believe in me, only that I might heal them. So many believe in me, only that I might use my powers to drive unclean spirits out from their bodies. And so many believe in me, simply that they might receive peace and joy from me. So many believe in me, only to demand from me greater material wealth. So many believe in me, just to spend this life in peace and to be safe and sound in the world to come. So many believe in me, to avoid the suffering of hell and to receive the blessings of heaven. So many believe in me, only for temporary comfort, yet do not seek to gain anything in the world to come. When I brought down my fury upon man and seized all the joy and peace he once possessed, man became doubtful. When I gave unto man the suffering of hell, and reclaimed the blessings of heaven, man's shame turned into anger. When man asked me to heal him, I paid him no heed and felt abhorrence toward him. Man left me to seek the aid of evil medicine and sorcery. When I took away all that man had demanded from me, everyone disappeared without a trace. That's why I say that man has faith in me because I give too much grace. And they have faith in me because there is far too much to gain. Yes. Man's relationship with God is merely one of naked self-interest. It is a relationship between a receiver and a giver of blessings. To put it simply, this is an employee-employer relationship. The employee works only to receive the rewards bestowed by the employer. There is no affection. In such a relationship, only transaction. There is no loving or being loved, only charity and mercy. There is no understanding, only suppressed indignation and deception. There is no intimacy, only an uncrossable chasm. I have held man to a strict standard throughout. If your loyalty comes with intentions and conditions, then I would rather be without your so-called loyalty. For I abhor those who deceive me through their intentions and extort me with conditions. 
I wish only for man to be absolutely loyal to me and to do all things for the sake of and in order to prove one word, faith. Amen. 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 God's words of judgment were like a sharp knife that pierced my heart. I felt so ashamed, and I came to my senses. I reflected on myself. In all my years, as a believer, what did I want? I thought how, in those years, I'd help my brothers and sisters whenever they needed me to. I'd do whatever duties the church needed and do the best I could. And even when I was jailed and tortured by the CCP, I didn't betray God. I thought that I'd done a lot of good works in that time. But through the revelation of God's words and exposure of the facts, I saw that I hadn't done all those things to submit to and satisfy God, but just to gain His grace and blessings, to keep my body healthy and make it to a good destination. So the first time I got sick, I thought that because I had done so much for God, surely there's no way He would let me die. So I didn't blame God. Then again, when it got worse, and I could not even take care of myself, when I really struggled with suffering and the idea of dying, I realized my chances of gaining the blessings of the kingdom of heaven were quite slim, and I regretted expending myself. I even used all my past sacrifices to try and reason with God and argue with God. I was trying to transact with God, deceiving God, using Him. That's a far cry from truly expending for Him. I then reflected on why I had been so unreasonable. Just as God's words had revealed, I had gotten this mistaken idea, thinking that since I had expended for God, that I should be blessed for that, given a good destination and a healthy body. Just like out in the secular world, it's considered fair to get the amount of money you make based on how hard you work. I thought I could use my suffering to trade with God for a good destination. And so I was upset when I didn't get it. That was really unreasonable. God is holy and righteous. He wants us to give sincerely. But with my despicable motives, I tried to make deals. I was deceiving and resisting God. If I didn't repent soon, God would surely eliminate me. Right. Thank God. Your fellowship today has been really helpful. Yeah. So, how did you resolve the state you were in? Well, first, I prayed to God and read God's words to find out the root of the issue. Later, I read these words of God. Let's all watch a video about it now. Almighty God says, What was the basis on which people used to live? All people live for themselves. Every man for himself, and the devil take the hindmost. This is the summation of human nature. People believe in God for their own sakes. They abandon things, expend themselves for Him, and are faithful to Him. But still, they do all these things for their own sakes. In sum, it is all done for the purpose of gaining blessings for themselves. In society, Everything is done for personal benefit. Believing in God is solely done to gain blessings. It is for the sake of gaining blessings that people forsake everything and can withstand much suffering. This is all empirical evidence of man's corrupt nature. As for what Satan's poison is, it can be fully expressed with words. For example, if you ask some evildoers why they act that way, they will answer, 
every man for himself, and the devil take the hindmost. This single phrase expresses the very root of the problem. The logic of Satan has become people's lives. They may do things for this purpose or that, but they are only doing it for themselves. People all think that since it is every man for himself and the devil take the hindmost, they should live for their own sakes, doing everything in their power to secure a good position and what food and clothing they need. Every man for himself and the devil take the hindmost. This is the life and the philosophy of man, and it also represents human nature. This statement is precisely Satan's poison, and when internalized by people, it becomes their nature. Satan's nature is exposed through these words. They completely represent it. This poison becomes people's lives as well as the foundation of their existence, and corrupted humanity has been consistently dominated by this poison for thousands of years. Amen. Amen. God's words reveal the true essence of my nature. The reason I'd made transactions and deceived and used God is because I was deeply corrupted by Satan. My thoughts had all been influenced by Satan's poison. I'd lived according to satanic principles, like every man for himself and the devil take the hindmost. I acted out of self-interest, only spending for God so I could make a deal with him. I wanted to get something from God, trading my work with God in order to get blessed. Satan's poison made me seek my own gain, and I was selfish and lowly, too. With no blessings or benefits, I'd blame God for it. I truly had no humanity. But God, in order to save humanity, in his first incarnation, was crucified to redeem all mankind. In his second incarnation, he came to China to do work was persecuted by the CCP and condemned by the religious world. Mm. God endured such suffering and humiliation, but still expressed the truth to water us all. God has never asked anything of us, True, but has been quietly working for mankind. And I didn't repay God's love. I just demanded that he give me more. Things like his blessings, blaming God when I didn't get them. Where was my conscience? There was no way I'd deserve to enter the kingdom of heaven. After realizing this, I really hated myself. But I also felt grateful to God. If I had never been bedridden and sick, had never felt the fear of dying, I would never have reflected on myself. I would have kept going down that same mistaken path. I would have been abandoned by God without even knowing why. God was merciful and didn't want me to go astray. He used the judgment of his words in sickness to awaken me and let me reflect and turn towards God. This was all God's love for me and his salvation. I felt so completely moved, and so I prayed to God. Dear God, I see what you're doing now, that this sickness is part of your love. I'll submit to you. Only through this judgment, chastisement, and refinement would I see my improper motives as a believer and start to change my corrupt disposition. Now I am willing to change all my errant notions and do my duty as a creature of God. Thank, Thank God. God. Thank God. Later, I read these in God's words.
there is no correlation between the duty of man and whether he is blessed or cursed. Duty is what man ought to fulfill. It is his heaven-sent vocation and should not depend on recompense, conditions, or reasons. Only then is he doing his duty. To be blessed is when someone is made perfect through judgment and enjoys blessings. To be cursed is when someone's disposition is unchanged after they are chastised and judged. It is when they are not perfected and thus punished. But regardless of whether they are blessed or cursed, created beings should fulfill their duty, doing what they ought to do and doing what they are able to do. This is the very least that a person, a person who pursues God, should do. You should neither do your duty only to be blessed, nor refuse it for fear of being cursed. Let me tell you this one thing. Man's performance of his duty is what he ought to do. And if he is incapable of performing his duty, then this is his rebelliousness. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now I understand. I am a created being. Giving and expending for God isn't just right and proper. It is my duty. It's not right for me to make demands of God. With all my despicable motives, I just wanted blessings and a good destination for all my work. This was unreasonable. Right. God gave me life. And even if I'm not healthy or without destination, I should still follow God, expend myself for Him in my duties, the way a child respects their parents, even if the parents discipline them, even if the parents don't give them what they want. Yeah. yeah. This is my responsibility. You're right. Though I hadn't fully recovered and still felt pretty awful, I no longer blamed God. I resolved that. No matter if I got better or not, I would submit to God's arrangements. Thank God. By the way, you were saying before that at first you thought by expending yourself you would earn God's commendation. So you put a lot of importance on giving and expending. How'd you change your mind about this later on? Yes. The things that count as a good deed and what will earn God's commendation before, I always judged based on my own imagination. But this is not God's will. Only after finding a standard of judgment in God's words did I understand what makes a good deed. God's words say, Can you read that? Sure. What is the standard by which a person's deeds are judged to be good or evil? It depends on whether or not you, in your thoughts, expressions, and actions, possess the testimony of putting the truth into practice and of living out truth reality. If you do not have this reality or do not live this out, then you are without a doubt an evildoer. How does God see evildoers, your thoughts and external acts? Do not bear testimony for God nor do they put Satan to shame or defeat Satan. Instead, they shame God and are riddled with marks that cause God to be ashamed. You are not testifying for God, not expending yourself for God, or meeting your responsibility toward God. You act for your own sake. What is the implication of for your own sake? For Satan. Therefore, in the end, God will say, Depart from me, you that work iniquity. In God's eyes you have not done good deeds, but rather your behavior has turned evil. You will not be rewarded, and God will not remember you. Is this not completely in vain? Since you are sure this way is true, you must follow it to the end and keep your devotion to God. Since you have seen that God himself has come to the earth to perfect you, you should give your heart entirely to him. Whatever God does, 
even if he doesn't give you a good ending, if you can still follow him, this is maintaining your purity before God. Offering a holy spiritual body and a pure virgin to God means keeping a sincere heart in front of God. For mankind, sincerity is purity, and the ability to be sincere toward God is maintaining purity. Amen. Amen. With God's words, I then understood. God wants people to be sincere, to willingly sacrifice for God, asking nothing in return, to practice the truth, to bear witness for God in our duties. That's what good works really mean. Yes. I had a skewed understanding of good works before. I thought that if I expended, suffered, and sacrificed, I was building up good works, and God would remember. But in the age of grace, the Lord Jesus had commended the poor widow who gave an offering of money. Everyone thought she only gave a couple of coins, not that much. But God doesn't care how much you give, just your intention. Mm -hmm. The widow had genuine faith in God. She wasn't trying to make any kind of deal, so she earned God's commendation. That's right. As for me, I'd given many times what the poor widow had given God. So why hadn't God commended me? God wasn't disgusted by what I gave. He was disgusted by my motives and my deceitfulness. I was not being sincere. My giving was impure, like a transaction. No matter what I gave like that, it would never be good work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After realizing God's will, I prayed to God. I said, regardless if I recover or have a good destination, I would sincerely repay God's love and expend myself. Thank God. God. Later, my herniated disc didn't get better, nor did my heart illness. But I was no longer held down by my desire for blessings. I read God's words daily, and continued to go to gatherings and do my duty. Thank God. I know it's been hard, but you've learned a lot, even with your illnesses. What a blessing from God. Thanks be to God. It's true. I've been very lucky to accept the work of God in the last days and be able to hear God's voice. God had made an exception by exalting me. Through the judgment of God's words, I saw how corrupted by Satan I was, how bad I was. But now I've gained some reason and obedience before God. Now that I've changed this way, even if I do die, I will not have lived in vain. When I let go of my desires, not held back by my illness, I felt more grounded. And then, though I didn't seek treatment, I've slowly started to get better. These days, I can sit up and write articles, ones that bear witness for God, and I can take care of myself. Thank God. I thank God with all my heart for using illness to teach me, letting me see his salvation and love for me. There's a passage of God's words would you read it with me? Sure. sure. In their belief in God, what people seek is to obtain blessings for the future. This is their goal in their faith. All people have this intent and hope, but the corruption in their nature must be resolved through trials in whichever aspects you are not purified. These are the aspects in which you must be refined. This is God's arrangement. God creates an environment for you, forcing you to be refined there so that you can know your own corruption. Ultimately, you reach a point at which you would rather die and give up your schemes and desires 
and submit to God's rule and plan. Therefore, if people do not have years of refinement or suffer to some degree, they will not be able to rid themselves of the bondage of corruption of the flesh in their thoughts and hearts, in whichever aspects you are still bound by Satan, and in whichever aspects you still retain your desires and demands. These are the aspects in which you should suffer. Only through suffering can lessons be learned, which means being able to gain truth and understand God's will. Amen. Amen.